Ooh, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Colin Show. We haven't had one in a while, so I figured it's been a pretty pretty busy off season. The last time we had a Colin Show was after the last game of the season, and I don't think we've had one since. So I think it's a good time to bring the fans in, get a feel on how the spring ball has been going thus far, maybe get your thoughts and opinions on some of the things we've been seeing from spring ball, maybe even the coaching changes, because I haven't really talked about that. Obviously, the Princely comments have been really just scouring the internet. People give their thoughts and opinions about that as well. We talked about it last night. We gave you our thoughts and opinions. I was like, you know what? I think, look, it's a good time. Let's see what everyone else is feeling. The Trevor ETN DUI, there was a ton of comments on that. And I was like, you know what? This is just primed up. Primed up for, for, for a good little calling show. So a little fire up. A little get rocking and rolling. We'll say hey to the chat. Trav, Trav says I'm headed to my birthday dinner. Princely a bum. Happy birthday, big guy. Scott 2020. Go Gators. Jonathan Mays, little ass draft grade, little ass production. Hashtag better without him. Love the energy. Harrison Sanchez. Says Thursday night for the boys. You know what I'm saying? For the boys. Andrew Apple, what's up, fam? What's up, big dog? Blair Morgan, love the show. Love you, Blair. Thank you. Professor. What's up, baby? Come on, big dog. Uh Austin Stoltz. I live an hour from Oxford. Da, 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 da. I don't know what he's implying there, but okay. Links in the description, boys and girls. Give us a call. T- tap on in. Let's get it rocking and rolling. I know it's a little off the edge here, but uh, let's see. Bum- bums just love attention. Agree. Agree. Turd Ferguson. Ola. Tony. Yo, let's fucking go. Jason Stacy, let's do this. Let's absolutely do this. Let's have a good show. Um, Again, this show doesn't really work, though, unless you guys call in. So just got to keep that in mind. Um, we usually use StreamYard to do this, which is a little bit more user-friendly. But StreamYard is an absolute piece of shit and uh, wasn't working properly. So here we are. Here we are. Keith Hathcock. What's up, big dog? You know what's funny? Keith Hathcock uh, saw the, uh, the gator glass that we had on the last stream. I can't remember. One of the, one of the watch parties. And when ordered himself one. So... Kudos to Keith for, for twinsies. Espec, what's good, Sheldon? What's going on, man? Monkey plays. Yo, Swolton. What's up, man? Keith says, if we had so much talent, the coaches were telling him just to go play, he would have had more than seven sacks last year. Keith was a bombshell here. I love it. Blair says, it's our season. Can't wait, Gators, by a million. I love it. <clears throat> twinsies. I love it, man. I'm feeling good, man. I feel pumped up about the season. I was talking to Judd Davis Yesterday, we were texting a little bit, and I asked him, I said, what's your, what's your feelings? What's your thoughts? And he goes, I don't know, man. It's the hardest, hardest schedule in college football history. So we'll see. He's, um, I like Judd. He keeps it a buck. Obviously, big-time Gator fan, but been around, been around the game for a bit and um, has a good understanding of, you know, how these things work. Call me old-fashioned. Okay, Rick. I thought, I thought for sure Rick was dead. Streaming our favorite actor is Steven Seagal. Bosco, just checking in to see how the bottom half lives. <laughs> that was a good one. That was you can call him Bosco. We can talk about a big big stud. Um, do you have connections to play Boss Bostick Golf Course on campus? I I do play Austin on Bostick Golf Course. I have uh two or three times. Two or three times. I think I want to say I shot 79 one of the times. The other time like 80, 85, 86. It's a dog. It's a dog fight. It's a dog fight, man. That course is um I played with Judd. The time that I shot pretty well, I played with Judd, and Judd knows that thing like the back of his hand. So he was able to navigate me through that course. You know, need a golf stream, bro. I would love. Can I call without paying? Yeah, anybody can call, guys. There's nobody, nobody has to pay. Yeah, you can absolutely call, Tim. This this is free to everybody. Links in the description. It's call and show, boys and girls. So please call in. And we've got a sl- plethora of topics to talk about. So, um, Please, please, please call in. High Top Sports Golf Tourney. Damn, Scott, I like the way your brain thinks, man. I uh, Early on, I wanted to do a stream with Johnny Townsend. Not a stream, but look, I think a stream would be hilarious. If I can figure out like how to kind of set it up and not to be too much, but just where it's fun and I just kind of like a camera, a camera guy or two, 
That'd be sweet. How's the Gators men's golf team? I don't know. I don't know how they're doing, actually. But that'd be a hell of a stream, too, just to go play golf with them um, and do, like, a little, like, good, good kind of th- series, like, 2v2. Like, nobody's going to get hurt. And it would be a blast. It'd be an absolute blast. I would, I would love to do something like that. I don't know. I like the high top sports golf tourney, though. That'd be, that'd be fun. A lot of you guys play golf, it's a, it's, it's, which is great. I love it. Um, growing up, obviously, people didn't play as much. So Elijah says, y'all got a tough schedule this year. How y'all feeling about the coaching staff? Do they make it through the year? I got to think so. I got to think so. Um, I love it. How is it? Uh, Prince, princesses co- needs, need, needed coaches to how to play the run. <laughs> um, got to. That would be awesome. Yeah, Austin, it's, it's a good time. Um, I'm pretty sure like it's, it's open to the public for the most part. Um, I think I thought it was, I know maybe sometimes it's closed down, but need some lies. I feel that it would be great to get those guys on the screen with high top sports live. Yeah. Dude, the golf guys, Andrew. Yeah. Look, I mean, maybe that's something I can work out in the summer. We'll get with the collective because it's harder to do with other sports. I think kind of with injuries and whatnot, but I mean, just gonna like literally we could go do a two V two best ball type of thing. Give me like in golf, you rate your guys one through four. And so, like, I would get the best guy, and then maybe we, we tag up the worst two guys and rock and roll that way. We got boy Matt calling in. There we go. Breaking the ice. What's up, big dog? How are you, man? Not much. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Been a while since we chit-chatted, man. How are we feeling? What's what's, what's your takes? What do, you, what, do, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to comment on Prince League? Oh. Do you want to comment on spring ball? I have a lot. I have a lot. Well, first of all, I'm still pumped from that Yankee game. I'm at an adrenaline all-time high right now. But Are, are you to, one of those guys? You got a Lakers thing, a Yankees? Are you just... No, yeah. I just like Kobe, but I, I'm, I'm from New okay. York. I live in Florida now, but I'm, okay, a, okay. I, I'm a Giants, Yankees. My only South team is Florida because that's where my family okay. went to school. Right. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> but Princely's takes are fair. And weird at the same time. Okay. Because, A, we we know the coaching's bad, but at that spot, which is why they're not there anymore. But I thought um, Mike Peterson coached the edges, no? Or the outside, like, Jack linebackers. He's a, de- he is is a still defensive there. line assistant coach, and he is still there. Yeah. And the only reason it's weird is when you're held to that caliber and you're viewed as that superstar... You have number one. You're the guy. You're expected to know how to drop back in coverage. They're not asking you to be Vernon Hargraves out there. They just want a body there to stop an RPO. They're not. And immediately he deflected from what everyone knows he's bad at, which is you can't stop the run if your life depended on it. So why instantly you're like, yeah, they're, I need to get better a little bit at the run, even though my backups that were freshmen played it way better than me. I, I'm, but I really know how to drop back in coverage now. Like I'm a slot nickel DB. Like it's it, it the deflecting it's weird, which is why he almost seems like a locker room cancer, which is c- kind of why I'm glad he's gone, because it seems like he has that like swag and persona about him that. I like, but doesn't mm. seem like Billy likes. So that's it, yeah. That's he seems we were, like a Dan Mullen guy. That's exactly what we were talking about yesterday on the show. Of like, look, I don't think you leave Matt. Well, I think. Oh, there you are. Yeah, look, I think his swagger and it, you know how he carries himself is something exciting, and what I love about him. But look, I, and I even asked. I think it was Zach of like, hey, because there put possibility that there was maybe. A little bit of cancerous that he brought to the room, just not in the sense that it was he was negative, but maybe didn't fit the vibe. Maybe didn't, you For know, sure. possess the leadership qualities that were needed from somebody like him, with who had a ton of experience that it probably was supposed to be organically passed on, and maybe he just didn't, you know, I don't know, handle it well. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of question marks, obviously, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, like I don't and a Q Lee, Q Lee, call in if you can. Look, I don't think what he said was incorrect. I, I and that's why I think we are a lot of us are kind of like, look, there's obviously some truth to who, his comment because we let go of the defensive sure. line coach, some changes were made. Like, 
it's not like it was we were blind to it. It's just like I, I think you kind of nailed on the head. It's a little weird of how he kind of goes about it, right? That's the that's the biggest thing. Yeah. <clears throat> well, because I remember Billy's last press conference. What was it? This weekend, whatever. Yeah. He's like, now we have the ability to be more selective. So he's like, when I go to the portal, he's like, the reason I brought in, I think it was Jimmy Ardike. He's like, I I got him not just because of the talent. There was plenty of talented receivers. He's a t- he's the type of leader and type of player we need in the locker room, or something along those lines. And he he has that like Grant Mertz about him, that it that which makes sense because they're best friends and they played together and stuff. But it seems like Billy would rather have the guy that fits the scheme in the locker room and than the most talented player on the field. So a guy like a TJ CRC, who is extremely talented, or a Kelby Kelby Collins doesn't play that spot anymore. Uh, but who do you get? George Gums in the portal to play that Jack spot. Yeah. Like they, he's getting guys that might have a little less talent, but they're not going to Brenton Cox and make it all about themselves and go out of play out of system in a way to try to be that guy. Because when it's time to be that guy, they weren't there to be that guy. So for sure, uh, uh, it seems like they're trying to rush as a team and play D line, play defense in general as a team. Play as a unit. To me, Prince. Princely seems like a, it's all about me. I'm the only guy that matters. It's my world. You guys all live in it, and I don't think Billy wants that. So that that's kind of my take on that. No, but look, I think I think if it's you want to talk about spring ball and other things, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, let me go. I've got about a, other things. So I don't think there's much. I've got. To, uh, hold on, let me get uh, to talk about. A couple people calling Chai Town in here real quick, and we'll get Matthew to kind of back and forth, and then we're gonna get to Chad Hayes here in just a minute. What's on? What's going on, Chai? How you doing, man? Talk to me, big guy. Typical Miami guys, lacking the internet. You know what I mean? Should have expected this. Should have expected it. Mm. Chai Town, I expected more from you. Mm, unbelievable. Let's get Chad Hayes in here. We'll get we'll to run it back. Go on, Chad. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Doing great, man. You know, Mr. Sunshine Pupper here. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're usually at the fire fire house, right? Yeah, I'm off today, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Good to see you, man. So we're on shift. For- yeah, man. I just wanted to give you some of my thoughts about everything. Hey, let me hear, big guy. Uh, yeah, so first of all, love the show, bro. You guys have been killing it, man. I still watch every day and everything like that. Thanks, but man. uh as far as this season goes, man, I'm super optimistic because I think we're better on all levels. Especially sure. mm-hmm. our depth mm-hmm. on the D line. That's yep. that's what I'm most excited about, man. All the storylines on the D line right now. Oh, you're good. And uh and outside of that, man, like, uh, I forgot who was talking about it today. I think it was uh, Gators Online, uh, Nick De La Tour and uh, Zach Albervardi. They were talking about how – I don't know if you listened to them, but they were talking about how, like, athletic our uh, DBs are looking now and how excited they are for our DB room and stuff. And I just think that's going to be the difference this year, man, is our defense being more complete because last year we just got pushed around so much and everything like that, you know. And I think Gerald Chapman, I'm hearing a lot of great things about him. And Stephen Harris attested to that yesterday sure. just about how he's not putting up with no BS. So, No, look, I think I kind of alluded to a little bit yesterday that – and I was thinking about it on the way home. I was kind of going through it. And obviously I'm always going to be a sunshine pumper and be excited for, you know, what can – what's going to happen. And last year I was very excited, but there were some things that I had some question marks on that I was very open about, right? On paper, right. Let, let's just think about last year on paper, who we, what we were nervous of, the Graham Mertz. I, I pumped the what could be, but on paper, we should we were scared shitless, as we should have been. Uh, the offensive line on paper, we were scared shitless. I pumped up what was coming in. That's kind of how my, my, my flow is, but it was, it was nerve-wracking and it turned out to be what we thought it would be. Quarterback obviously play was a, it was a, uh, awesome. Defensively, honestly, on paper, I think we were probably pretty excited on what what was going to happen. And it didn't play out this year Especially on after paper. That spring game. Yeah, yeah, right. Especially after oh, that spring, they game. looked good early. They looked good early, and then I think it was they looked 
good until Kentucky, and then Kentucky went to South Carolina at some. They looked fine against Vanderbilt, but South Carolina was where Kentucky and South Carolina is where we're like, oh shit, something's going downhill now. Let's not forget LSU. And then they and well, then I they got we and that. then they started to get injured, and then it spiraled in LSU. Like losing I Shamar James that. was Our huge. Offensive line was just bad. Our offensive line was just bad. I don't think our D line necessarily was that great in the spring game. It was just our O line was atrocious, and we didn't sure. have depth. Yeah, 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 and so that's anyway. what we said after that game, right? Is it our D line's really good, or mm-hmm. is the O line just that bad? And and you know we found out pretty oh, yeah. quickly. So and they couldn't snap the ball that game either, so it made things harder because the balls kept going over Mertz and uh, what's the kid from Ohio State's name? Miller. Oh, Jack Miller. Jack they Miller. just kept getting the ball snapped that? over their head. Shelton, I had a couple questions for you, man. I don't know how long I got, but I just wanted to ask you a few things, man. So the first question I wanted to ask you is, in your opinion, we know Montreal's the guy, Mm -hmm. but do you see it being like a three-headed monster, or do you see it being like a Montreal Trayon show, you know? Or what what are you expecting as far as uh, who sees the field outside of Montreal and how often? Yeah, we, we actually we brought this question up last night because it's something that we, we – with uh, Cody went to the basketball game, spoke to Strickland. Strickland spoke very highly of, of Jaden Ball. Cam Carroll, we kind of forget, but he was a monster last year until he got hurt. I mean, he the kid runs with a lot of energy. So depending on his injury, I think he might get thrown in there a lot more. I think it's going to be the Montreal show. With, I think it's going to look like our, the freshman year of Trevor Etienne where Montreal is going to come in. Trevor Etienne is in, but Montreal's also fighting with uh, Naquan too. Don't forget. So Montreal took a minute nice. to get it going. So let's maybe more so what Montreal was last year and what Trevor Etienne was two years ago. Uh, but Trevor put on a lot, put on a lot of weight. Something that I was worried about when he first came was he's he was he's tiny. He was like five ten, like one eighty, one eighty five. Yeah. Now he's like two fifteen, two twenty. And the things that I was concerned about, I mean, he's basically a Trevor Etienne clone at this point. Without we don't know, you know. But when he played last year, I mean, he had a lot of big breaks. He had a lot of big runs. So I think that's going to happen. Right. And we'll There's see a, a speed difference. rotation between the three guys. I mean, it's kind of anybody's game. The interesting thing to me, though, is I keep hearing spring notes about, you know, Jaden Ball just broke, you know, a big run out. Or um, Caden Daniels just broke a big run out. You know, I know it's just spring ball. I know we're all excited looking for same. But I'm just saying, could they push themselves into that second spot, you know? I think if we've learned anything from Billy over the last two years is he sticks with his guys. Unless it's blatantly obvious that this guy's better. Because even for Naquan, wasn't his guy. But I felt like he stuck with Naquan longer than he probably should have. Because he definitely likes to make sure he gives respect to the role he does. It's just like, I think about baseball, right? Like, when do you sit a guy down to the minor leagues? Some coaches will hang on to a guy and, and, and believe in him a little bit longer than other coaches. I think Billy is one of those guys that he's going to ride it out a little bit longer. I, I, I don't, again, I don't think Trayon, he's got a dog in him, and I don't think he's going to let those kids come up and beat him, which is good. I think hey, it's going to be good. Last, good. And one last question, and I'll get out of your hand, man. You Outside of Trey Wilson, who do you see being the next man up? First, I- Aiden Mazel's getting a lot of a lot of hype, which I love. More clips came out today. He's putting on a lot of weight. And even uh, Cam Parker said it yesterday on the show. He goes, look, I think that wide receiver room is so uh, versatile that they may not be the starter. I think the starters are going to come out week one, and probably for the first six weeks is going to be Khalil, DK, and Eugene. But – I think Mazel is going to see a lot of playing time, kind of like what Eugene was in early on. Remember, Eugene wasn't the starter, but played a lot. And once, it, because he's such a, it was such a unique weapon, it's like let's just kind of keep him a secret as long as we can. I think that's going to be my, my Zell because he had an injury all last year. My yeah, my opinion is I think Tank Hawkins is going to be that Trey Wilson where they they use Mazel of course, but they're gonna he's a specialist. I heard he ran like a four two five forty or something in high school. So the kick you just got guys, guys, guys like that. You just got to get him the ball. Trevor Etienne played the kick return a lot, and I think that we see those guys. Gotta let Tr- I think you gotta let Tr- you gotta let Trey or Gene on the kick return. Yeah, if, true. Tr- Trey, Trey could. Trey is an explosive guy. Personally, I think Andy Gene's the next man up. Just sheer size, he brings that component of size to the table. Whereas some of the other speed demons, you know, we got speed demons, but Andy Gene's a big dude. Sure, he's, tall, he's dealing right? with an injury right now. So, but I, 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 I just said any of those guys, in my opinion, I think could really have right. a breakout year. So, am I yeah, is the tall one, there, one? Do you see Billy making it out at the end of this or not? If you were a betting man and you had to say, I know it's a tough question. 
See, give so it our betting man. I would bet my. I would bet on Billy to make it because I bet with my gut. I'm the kind of guy that wants to bet on something and be like, right? I'm not playing the odds. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm going go. in. I'm, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading like what's going on. Like what's just what's the dog in this? You know what I mean? I'm betting on a feeling and an emotion. I don't care that somebody's had you know 25 rebounds in the last 10 games. I want to know that there's a, a six footer that came from the the you know the projects and had to eat ramen noodles for the last 15 years. I'm like this guy's gonna shut him down. That's what I look for in March Madness. You know what I mean? That's the kind of betting guy oh, yeah. that I am, and that's why I'm putting my money on Billy to make it through. Let's go, baby. I'm right there with you. I'm actually going to watch him speak in a couple weeks at uh, the caravan he's doing in, in Gainesville. I'm going to see that. So I'm going to ask him a few questions if I can. But I love it. Yeah, I, I have heard on those – well, if it's in Gainesville, maybe he's going to be a little less. I know, like, on the travel ones, Brandon Olson said he went to New York. Bro, buddy showed up, spoke, and left. <laughs> like, zero. Oh, but that was New York. So that was kind of on right, the travel right. thing. I, I think at home it's going to be a lot different. So you're, I think you should be good. All right, boys. I appreciate you letting me on, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Call him. Yes, sir. Man, I'm gonna let you go too, man, because I only have so many lines on this, so I get to kind yeah, of people. You hear I, the I ring it. keep yeah. popping in, yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> Every two seconds. <laughs> See Coach popping right now. Yep, you're good, man. Yeah. All right, let me go ahead. Let me get Chai time back in here, and then we'll get to Harrison here in just a minute. Hopefully, this man fixes it. What's up, big guy? You, you get your shit right. Yeah, you know, every time I, I talk to uh, baby Gator fans, it's kind of like, it kind of messes up the vibe, and, you know, just doesn't work out so well. No. Baby Gator fans. What what do you want, Chai Town? What could you possibly want? <laughs> Ain't nothing, man. Like, we're both, like, midway through spring, I'm pretty sure, and we're five months away from week one in the swamp. You know, like, just, just calling in, getting a vibe on how you're feeling. You know, like, just Look, see how you're feeling is... on the spring this is going to come off extremely dis disrespectful, as I hope it would, but Miami is the least game that I'm worried about. I'm more concerned about Sanford than I am Miami. I am not well, worried about y'all. You're a bum-ass team. One bit. You think? I, look, hey, man, you I, better hope that Sanford's make it out of week one, man. Hey, so here's my thing with, with Miami. I, I, to be like, If we're looking at it, if we want to look at the, the sheet, if we want to look at the paper, they're the same right now. You've recruited a little bit better on on the sense that you've finished higher than us, but quality you haven't. It's it's damn near neck and neck. That you don't don't give me the mice. False. Oh no, no. false, false, no. big false. All right, you're gonna you're already big gonna false. be spicy. It's already spicy. It's already hot. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna be reasonable. No, see, we're gonna be see, reasonable adults. See, Sheldon, Sheldon, Sheldon. I gotta look. See, you guys have beaten us quality wise, probably skill position. I'll give you guys that, but in the trenches, it's not close. Okay, so I'm just talking about. Just, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me. So overall recruiting classes is what I was referring to in the sense of quality of overall classes is is yeah. is neck and neck. So if you want to get okay. in, into the granulars of this position and that position, sure. Maybe you got an edge over this one, and we got. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm just talking about on paper, right? If we want to talk about production on the last two years from our coaches. They both been pretty. We've got some question marks. I mean, absolutely. absolutely. You did. You didn't oh, nail yeah, against yeah. Georgia Tech. All right. So let's. What did you? And you went five and seven the first year, and then what? Seven and five last year. Right? Seven and six. All last. Okay, seven and six. And you're and you're and you play in like basically in like D three college football. So <laughs> like like if we're looking at it, like you're still I think a little less on production. Again, recruiting wise, pretty damn near even. I like our quarterback play much much better than yours. Running back play, and yes, trenches, offensive linemen. You guys have you guys beat us out on like three guys. So I would I'll give you that on the quality uh, for the trenches. But I look, man, I'm not sold on Cam Ward. I'm not sold on the all these big time quarterbacks sliding around. Uh, DG Ugalali, KJ Jefferson over to Arc uh, to U UCF. I just don't think they're gonna have the spark like a Jaden Daniels. And again, these guys, Jaden Daniels, Jordan Travis, they were at their their respective schools. For two years, they didn't just come in and pop off. You know what I mean? For, no, for sure. Uh, with with DJ at FSU, even uh, the reporters have been like, "Yeah, DJ has been missing throws, but you know it'll build the chemistry with the receivers and anything." Um, with our camp, it's not really the same. So, for instance, like we're pretty much short on DBs, which I think actually week one actually favors you all because the speed that you guys have at wide receiver probably could be really uh really the game changer now the question mark that you guys have is if your offensive line 
can grow in year three because we're both in the same boat as in both of our coaches are in year three sure. now is where we should see what the coach has been trying to build you know this 100%. is when culture should overtake everything 100 percent. um and i i definitely hear you guys say that you have a lot of uh depth on the defensive line i think we're pretty much uh even on that uh skill wise you can go you know name for name but i think we're we're gonna see the game kind of tilt is whoever's offensive line can hold up a lot longer who can protect their quarterback you know because running back we're pretty much we're pretty much equal skill position you might have the edge depending on uh what people you know rank on skill position defense i think we got you this year i think it's going to be a nice defensive game but i just want to see you know how you guys are are excited during this spring because for miami fans we're just like okay show us you know, we've been stacking recruiting classes. We brought in all these players. You got to show us. With you all, I I've kind of heard different things of you guys are going into like this really tough schedule. Like, I, and I will give you guys credit if Miami or FSU was in there, we're probably going the same as you guys, or sure. if not worse. So like, I'm not gonna like you know uh, during the season I'll say y'all lost if we sure. won like you know the regular stuff, but definitely like in this spring. If Graham Mertz and and what's their is is Lagway quarterback number two already? Like is that oh, yeah. set in stone? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the thing though. If Mertz, I'm I'm knock on wood because I don't wish injuries on every, anybody. But if your offensive line cannot protect Mertz, and he ends up you know tripping on his shoelaces or a little bit and is out for a couple games, do you think that Lagway can reach you guys to that next level or keep you guys at a certain standard? I you think know, we're I think... in a in a the best position we've been in three years in in, in backup quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because when so with Jack Miller and Max Brown, I mean, it was like, dude, he came in and was like, these guys are like they they, they lost in the sauce out there. Now, yeah. come game one, I don't know. You right? That's gonna be it's. I mean, that's DJ Lagway. That would be if that were to happen. That's DJ Lagway's first real college football game. That's that's a lot. Um, but yeah. look, I think if you can if you can build around it to where that you're not re relying so much on the quarterback play. Yeah, I think DJ can come in and fit into the system if, if it's built properly. Um, Graham Mertz, I mean, like, think about it. He got injured because, not because of the O-line last year, because... He's no, a, he, he, he ran for first down. Yeah, he's yeah, a he's, tough he's, 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 he he's a Heisman front. runner. He's a Heisman front runner. So, I mean, the guy just, just trucks somebody. Uh, your quarterbacks are a bunch yeah, of pansies. Back on that. Take, take, take a few steps back on that one. It's okay. Yeah, You, you can think that. Your, your quarterback hurt himself by, like, like just taking a jump. I don't even know what he did. But uh look, Cam Ward's legs scared the shit out of me. Cause KJ Jefferson tore us up with his legs. Uh Jaden Daniels tore us up with his legs. Like a quarterback that can be is that is mobile like that in college is just it can it can make a close game. Uh it, 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 you can just go to that and you can run away with it. I don't think te uh defensive teams are disciplined enough. Unless you're getting like again, we saw what happened with Washington, but Penix really didn't use his legs too much. They just beat him in the air, but well, with us, it's more of a question of Cam Ward's coming from a school where he had to be the main man. Like, you know, he had to be that whole team. Like, now he's he on a team where he, No, he doesn't. No, he You're doesn't. Crazy. Why is everybody think that? No, he doesn't. You're crazy. Why is every? Why does everybody think that? Really? Really? I think yeah, our offensive line is better than Washington State. Look, I defensively, I agree with you because I felt like you guys could have won that, that, uh, that FSU game. But you couldn't keep up yeah, offensively. You could, yeah, you couldn't yeah. move Our the football. Freshman quarterback, first first start at Tallahassee. Yeah, you couldn't move the ball. I was yeah. I was irritated as 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 fuck watching you guys because I was like, my god. Defensively, yes, I think you guys are getting that thing figured out. Crystal ball. I don't. I'm just not a believer in crystal ball, man, at all. And that's how probably some people view Billy. And it's not even me being a hater. It's just like I just I don't know. I'm not sold on the guy. Well, no, I could definitely understand because, I mean, he's had some very questionable scenarios. What gives me hope is everything that we said was his problem year one, he changed year two. And then what he has problems with year two, I want to see if he changes year three. He's been able to show that he can adapt Fair and enough. hold on to us. You know, this is our first time having an offensive coordinator for two straight years, defense coordinator for two straight years since i think 2020 2021 so it's definitely i think we're ahead on chemistry i feel like he's brought in the right culture now if he can change his 
you know, game time tendencies? Can, can he call a timeout at the right time? Can he, you know, actually be aggressive? I feel like we, we're, we're going to be cooking with grease. So with you guys, you know, you have your players talking trash or on, on other teams that they leave, you know. I don't know. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't strike me as, like, a, a coach who's built good culture. But at the same time, we, we don't know. Because from, the, from inside the Gators, you know, team, we're not hearing too much. It's every player that's kind of leaving. So is all, that? I mean, they're all except Trevor or Mullen guys. <laughs> yeah, you know. So and then Trevor, you know, he fell into the Georgia curse of uh, you know driving while uh, while too happy. So, you know, is that a is that a show of Billy's culture is falling apart, or is that him getting rid whoa, whoa, of the how players? Is, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa! How is Trevor drinking have anything to do with Billy? What you mean? He came from you guys. No, hold the hold the phone. Hold the- <laughs> But that's nonsense. That is that is blasphemy. If you if you're trying to pump that narrative, the guy was at Florida for two years, didn't have a lick of a spot on his record. He's gone for no joke three months, and all hell breaks loose. Well, now here's the question though. Do that you guys speaks. You know what that does? That actually speaks volumes to Florida's culture that they keep shit in check. And so the moment that he got to go breathe a little bit, busted uh-huh. a wide open. Or, or you guys has you know held a lot of stuff under under the rug real good, and you have a really good PR team. Either way, great culture. We got our shit in check, <laughs> so you're just supporting everything all around. We got the cops paid, and everybody. That's why we can't get recruits. We're paying the cops. So either way, it's working. Hey, listen, but I definitely think this year we're we're gonna see Billy's true team. Now, there's I'm not saying your team is perfect because obviously you guys have some holes. You know, like you know what? There's very few teams in college that don't. Sure. Um, I definitely think Graham coming back, he's going to have that hunger. I think he's a, he's a well-spoken leader on the team, as far as I've heard from a lot of your fans and, you know, watching uh, Florida Gator shows. Uh, your, your baby DC, you know, he bringing that hey, energy. Hey, so watch, watch how you talk about Austin. <laughs> hey, he's young. He's a baby DC. It's okay. Hey, that's the main right there. Hey, listen. And I honestly do think our, our DC is going to take him to school week one, but I definitely think that, this spring, I think, will tell a lot. You know, I think watching the spring game and seeing if uh, how your team performs, I think that'll that'll tell you guys a lot on the season. And this transfer portal, the second one's probably going to be insane. So we're yeah, that's we're what it sounded like. Which some, I mean, that's that could be a huge impact too. So like, we may get some answers on the spring game, but depending on how these teams function, you know, after the fact could be a big a big change. Yeah. Obviously, we're, dealing with injuries too. We're seven over on scholarships, so we we have no idea who's leaving. Uh, oh, we wow. might leave. Yeah, we might lose players who are fan favorites. We, uh, I don't know, you know. Well, so tell even us, go, tell them to go sit in the in the stand. There's plenty of room for those guys to go. Well, you know, I definitely think if <laughs> if they end up leaving, they're probably going to go to like you know USF, UCF, you know, try and get some playing time because you know we brought in a lot of more talented players. So I'm definitely interested to see where they go. Sure. And, and you know, maybe they'll check in uh, on uh, week one and and watch Miami. You know beat Florida by like 21. So we'll see how it goes. I appreciate you, Chop, man. As always, man, calling it. Thank you, man. All right, for sure, man. Go Kings. Yes, sir. All right, Harrison, I can't hear you. All right, man, just because you're yelling at the TV screen. (laughs) Hi. What's up, man? What what were you yelling? (laughs) No, I was was doing stuff. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to tell you this, High Top. Uh, I was on this show before the F- after the FSU game, and I said this. I said uh, after this season, I said this is the off season. This the ball's in Napier's court. He's got a he's got a what he's got to do. He's got to do. And a week later, Corey Raymond and Sean Spencer go out the door. And you know Napier is to his credit. I think he's made the appropriate changes because he's went out and found coordinators that have been proven to have elite defenses. You know with. Will Harris, you know, he was Washington's defense and they had a top 20 red zone defense, you know, with, court, um, what's his name? The D-line coach. Uh, Gerald Chapman. Gerald Chapman. Yeah, I, I like him. I think he brings the intensity. You know, Ron Roberts was an amazing hire. You know, you, I think Napier has finally gone out and said, I'm going to find these guys that can bring this defense to what it is. And I, to his credit, I think Billy Napier has done exactly that. I, I love all the hires he's made because he's made the right hires. He, didn't, he hasn't made hires from people that he's liked. He's made hires from people that can, are proven, that can help 
uh, our, our defense. I, I, I think our defense is going to look a lot better this year. I just I think it is because you, know, you got Ron Roberts coaching. You got Will Harris pushing these guys. You know, I think our defense is going to look a lot better this year than it has in the previous years. No, I agree. I think the Ron Roberts hire is, is such a, a massive hire. And like, even talking with um, with Jake Cranon, who's obviously an Auburn fan, and hearing the great things he had to say about Ron Roberts and what he was able to do at Auburn with very little. Again, he kind of, and this is where I would get frustrated with Auburn because about where there's so much hype behind Auburn is Auburn hasn't really recruited well in like a decade. And that was what Jake was saying. I was like, look, this guy's out here working with non-NFL talent and, and, and making this shit work. I mean, we saw what they were able to do against Georgia and Alabama. That's all Ron, That was all Ron Roberts. That was a defensive coordinator. Um, it, you know, it didn't work out. I think wrong place, wrong time. But it wasn't due to the lack of him being able to do the job. And that's exciting for us to have on our side now. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. I think the, also the thing is, high top is the experience that he has will help Austin Armstrong because, you know, Ron Roberts is coached for longer than I've probably been alive. So, you know, yes. he's, he has that, he brings that level of experience to the Gators. You know, he can tell Austin Armstrong, hey, you know, maybe this isn't working. Maybe this is working. Do this. or Because, you know, he's got like four or five decades of experience over Austin Armstrong. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the great thing is, too, it's not like it's just some guy that has a ton of experience coming in. It was his mentor at one point. So it's just it's getting the band back together from that perspective. And then even what Chi Town was kind of saying about Crystal Ball, you can kind of see him not making good in-game decisions. Billy's had that same type of issues in the past two years. I think having somebody like Aron Roberts on the sideline that he can probably trust to just manage an entire side of the ball that he wasn't able to do like last year i'm sure there there had to have been some type of controversies which we never really heard it which i think speaks volumes to the culture with armstrong with Quay raymond with uh you know the d-line coach coach chaos given how it, the season played out where there was a massive disconnect and he was probably having to play babysitter for part of the time which took away from what he had to do what he needed to do was call plays and make smart decisions so all those things he addressed now, you can go and argue that why is that even a factor in the first place, and that's a whole other rabbit hole that we don't have, you know, the time and need, know how. Yeah. Q, call back in. Q Lee's over here talking shit. He called in, but it kicked him out. Go ahead, man. Um, let me let me make this point, High Top. And somebody asked me, I have a friend who's a close friend of mine who's a big Gator fan. He said, like, what do you want to see from Napier this season? I said, look – I will tell you this. Somebody asked me, how would you feel if the Gators went eight and four? I'll tell you, I'd be completely happy if the Gators went eight and four this upcoming season. Because at least that's improvement. You know, you sure. got to start somewhere. And I'll tell you this. What I most want to see, High Top, is the, the little things first. Like, there's no excuse last year for having two number threes on the field for the Utah game. Like, we had two number threes on the punt. Like, how does that happen? And then in the Arkansas game where your field goal team runs onto the field while your offense is trying to spike the ball. It's like, like you can't make those mistakes. Like, those are just fundamentals you just can't get wrong. Like, it's like I would expect that out of, like, an FCS school, not an FBS school. It's like you, you, those, are, those mistakes are the things you just can't make because those things can easily decide a game quickly. They can – like, because the Gators punt – the Utah punting the Gators, that was huge. And then all of a sudden that penalty happens and – Utah Big gets momentum. the ball right back, and they go down and score. And then the Arkansas game, if that didn't happen, Trey Smack probably hits that field goal, and we're sitting here having a lot of different conversations. So it's it's the small things that I want to see just improved on from Napier in year three. Now, do I think he's going to improve? I, I do. I think Napier is going to make a huge jump. The question is, is this enough? Like, does he recognize the small – like, you just cannot make mistakes like like what those two mistakes were last year. No, I, I completely agree. And that was that was the biggest narrative of last year was it's not the fact that we're losing, it's how we're losing, which was just it just it stinks. It, it's it's like it's I mean, it's not as bad as not kneeling like Miami the Georgia Tech, but it's pretty damn close. It's pretty damn close. And uh it sucks. It yeah. absolutely sucks. <clears throat> I will say uh Graham Mertz, I, I gotta give Graham Mertz a lot of credit. You know, I'm gonna I was I'm gonna be honest with you, I top I was initially skeptical because I had seen Graham Mertz in Wisconsin and I was like, like okay, like, like really this dude, but he's exceeded my expectations. I mean, he's, he's come in and he's definitely earned the starting QB job. I mean, I was impressed with him last year. He, he had the game against South Carolina where he threw for like 400 yards and I was sitting there going, Oh shit. Is he like, what is this Grant Mertz or is, am I watching like, 
you know, it was I, Graham Burks. I, I'm happy he's back. You know, he's he's definitely. I I think he's earned the starting job. He's earned that number fifteen, which is a huge number to wear if you're a QB. But you know, I think he's earned it. No, I love Graham, man. I think he has been an absolute blast to watch. And it, it, like again, it's watching what Billy was able to do with him last year uh, excites me too, and excites me for what DJ Lag was going to be able to do. Oh yeah. Oh, DJ is going to be insane, dude. I can't wait to see him play. You want a spring game? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. But uh, I'm going to probably watch it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Um, my main concern for this year is the offensive line, just because it's not been great. And I, I'm just worried about, like, we have Rob Sale. Who else? What's the other guy's name that we hired? I keep forgetting. Um Oh, Deco- yeah, the, the other offensive line, uh, J- uh, DeCoster, Callaway, Callaway. John DeCoster. John DeCoster, yeah. I I just hope that the O-line looks, like, a little bit better because there was just games where they just didn't seem like they could block anybody. Like, yeah, Graham was just- Mertz was just, like, running for his life 90% of the time. Like, he had to throw on the run a lot of times. And I'm sitting there like, guys, like, <laughs> please block. Like, it's – and when Graham Mertz kept getting hit hard, I'm like, eventually he's going to get hurt. And, you know, that's exactly what happened. Because if your O-line can't protect you, it doesn't matter if you can run out of the pocket. You know, he's eventually going to take his sack, and that's going to be it for the season. And, you know, I just, I'm just i hoping the O-line improves a little bit. But, yeah, that, that's my main concern going into this season. The one good thing, I mean, with the O-line being ranked 131st out of 132, uh, you know, you can only go up. I would assume. So it's imagine if you could just get it a little bit better, uh, how it can look. But Harrison, I appreciate you, man, for calling in. Love the jacket. Yeah. Swagalicious. <laughs> and uh, if uh, you do watch the game, obviously we're going to be doing a show after the fact. We should be streaming there, but I do appreciate you, man. Go Gators, big guy. Love the hat too, man. Go Gators. Yep. Yeah. All right, here, a little bit to get it. I don't know what the name is. It's like HBLV1. What's going on, man? <laughs> It's, it's HBK being on Thug, bro. Okay, okay. That's a lot of mouth. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I joined um the Utah game last year. When, I, uh, I, I remember seeing the name. I recognize it. I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we talked before. Like. You I'm, called a couple times. Unless and you, I've seen. We had it back in as much as I can. I, I'm definitely going to be there for the spring game, too, so I can meet you, bro. I really want to meet you, bro, because I love your show. You already know that. Cool, but, man. Bro, I love it. I'm excited about that. A lot of that. people. I I love how all of us get a see what the whole line want to look like. I'm losing you, boss. Motions, you know, like I hate the orbit motions. Like I don't even lie, it, I feel like it throws our offense off rhythm sometimes when we put Eugene just keep on going back and forth on the orbit, orbit motions when we really need him to be working in the slot sometimes and in the bubble screens way more. And, like, he don't really do a lot of – I don't see him doing a lot of downfield three wide receivers, like trios, or just, like, stacking stacking the wide receivers on both sides sometimes just to throw the – spread the offense out more and, and make the defense commit more to our wide receivers and respect them so we can get more running lanes, you know, so – the offense, the offensive line don't have to have so much pressure. Like it's more or less like, what are we gonna do? The defense doesn't have to anticipate what we're gonna do. They already know what we're gonna do half of the times because they watch film of us from just doing the orbit motions, and it's easy to read if you just keep running the same things over and over and over and over again. So I feel like, as far as Billy play calling, I just don't want to see the stagnantness inside, you know, inside the orbit motions. But I really want to see how we're gonna use, like everybody say tank and how we're going to use you know uh abrams how we're going to use mm. uh andy jean uh mazel and like of course we got jacare on frazier's but like what what does he re- like what's his value as far as deep threat or as far you know like is he just a good like blocking wide receiver like i feel like he's a do-it-all wide receiver but i still don't know what his role truly is but i feel like he's respected in the wide receiver room a little bit more like, K-Jack, I feel like he's the one, though. Like, yeah. everybody's saying Eugene, but... I, K-Jack, I, I just, yeah, Khalil remember, Jack, like, low-key kind of that dog, bro. Bro, listen, remember when everybody was transferring out the portal and it was going on Twitter, on Twitter, on Twitter, 
and I forgot when it was, but K Jack he put out his practice highlights, and everybody like he 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 put the caption was like everybody really know who really like I'm really like wide receiver one, and if you watch this highlights, bro, I was like yo, what are we doing? Like who who you know what I'm saying? Like who watching the evaluations and practice sometimes? Cause even little Bowman, if you watching right now, like I see he 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 cooking some of the DBs like who really didn't play like. See why didn't play number five, Kamari Wilson, because mm. Bowman was was doing it to him in the in one on ones in practice. Like I could see it. Like Kamari Wilson, I could like that's how look how fast things change. Kamari Wilson was our five star from his Crazy. you know his recruiting class. Crazy. Now look at look at our DB room now. You know, like when when the DB room disappeared, like when Mullen left, we wanted it, but like we needed to see. You know, some more quality because to really go, and we, you know, everybody talk about the cleat, but our DB room was 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 really so off balance that year. We only had Kamari Wilson, you know, like that's the only reason why we used to really be in the games because of him, and then really Trey Dean. That was when Trey Dean was really his best, like his freshman year, and after he got hit, that's when everything changed, you know. But as far as our DB room, this is the best DB room we had in a long time. Man. Yeah, I like, think it has talent. It has young talent. It has, you know, a lot of veteran uh, presence as well, too, with Douglas, with Triquez coming in from Oregon. Uh, I, I, you know, Aza Turner, obviously in that safety position. I think Jordan Castell is going to make a big leap. Gregory Smith, man, I'm telling you, that's my guy this year. Four-star uh, kid. Is, he's, he is going to be a freak to watch, for sure. Like those big... And, and Bridges from Oregon, Bridges from Oregon, bro. He, that man, if uh, he looked like he about six four, six five. If you look he at is. the yeah, film, he's six, four. Like, yeah, that man don't four, look like little at all. Bro. He's big, bro. Like, I'm loving the DB room. I, I we just really just need to see what the linebackers is talking about. You know, as far as who is going to be stepping up as far as Shamar James. And now we know that Miles Graham hurt. Like that's to me, that's a big blow. Like because. I need to see who we got now in the linebacker room that we we can rely on. Offensive line wise, I feel like Billy did his thing in the portal by picking up some vets. Like we needed some experience sure. to plug them holes sure. in. But I don't. I really don't feel like our D line is going to be bad at all. I feel like everything for the D line was top notch as far as off season wise. Everything that we needed. And then if you, it's obvious if Mr. Stephen Harris telling us that. They they're coaching the, the details, like that's what you need in the SEC. Like I don't know if you noticed, but Kentucky D line last year was low key like nasty, crazy. Yeah, look, and that was you know Kentucky, that's Kentucky. Kentucky, I felt like does a good job, and was obviously they didn't win the big ones, but they were able to dominate games they should have dominated because you could tell they they focus on 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 the little things, and it, and it, and it, and it showed in big games like Florida where they were able to dominate. Uh, do we play Mizzou this year? No, we don't. <clears throat> uh, let's 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 everybody let's give a round of applause for them not scheduling us because them boys, hey, they, well, they, hey, they scheduled no everyone this. but. So I don't know if we should give them a round of applause, but <laughs> I, I I feel like they're really the best in the SC West. Like oh Miss, I feel like we ain't gonna have to worry about them because Lane Kiffin gonna do what Lane Kiffin. There's do. no West anymore. Every, it's all hey, it's all wide open now. Oh, the facts. I feel, boy, it's crazy. Yeah, it's wide open. <laughs> it's crazy. But man, it was great talking to you, man. I'm gonna let you everybody too, else get get it I in, man. You, man. Thank man, you for calling in. Thank you for support. Come say hey at the spring game, though, man, for sure. You already know it, bro. I'm gonna be out there, bro. All right, man. I'll see be both. safe, Thank man. You too, man. Go Gators. Go Gators. All righty, rock and rolling. We got uh, John. Yo, what's going, what's on, going man? on, man? Bro, for a minute when I saw you in the, I don't in the know room, what's going on here with my camera. I think you always have a hat on. And... I, yeah, I went in and went out because I was trying to fix the camera. There we go. I got it now. Yeah, but your ass is bald. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> it... I never seen you without. A oh hat. yeah, bro. I I shaved I shaved it all off. Okay. No, I'm, well, you know what, dude? Honestly, my hair just started thin, and I was just like, fuck it, I cut it. That <laughs> no, looks good. I just I, I cut like, it, man. My I was I. I... I'm grateful because I'm one of the few who can pull off a bald head, but I'd much rather have my hair low key. I, I, nobody wants to be bald, bro. True, true, <laughs> true. How are we feeling, man? You know, man, listen, 
I know y- y'all haven't seen me on the show in a minute, bro. I work so many hours, so it's like, Damn. I, I, I haven't, I, I haven't, I'm always watching the next day I drive for a living, so I'm always listening to the stuff in, in my truck. You know what I mean? I don't even I listen it. to music anymore. But, Dude, it's, it's a so cheat listen. code, man. When we, go on, when we go on trips, like eight, seven mm-hmm. hours road trips, bro, I pop, pop a podcast in, and I... Yeah. Dude, it's crazy, like how the time flies. It is, it is beautiful. I feel like a Gator inner, insider who isn't getting paid to do my job because all the time I spend doing this shit. Honestly, <laughs> I, you know, here's here's the thing, man. I've had so much to get off my chest because I feel like I've heard so much ranting and raving, even from our own people, man. And it's just been like, I don't even know where to start with some of it, but some of it's bothered me. And like, um, all right, so. Uh, strength and conditioning like obviously it wasn't good but i just wouldn't want to remind people remember when mullen was here and we were complaining about strength and conditioning because people were supposedly being winded so it's like oh we're com- we're complaining that that these guys are doing all this cardio but remember that's where we were at before billy napier showed up we were showing guys who couldn't finish four quarters and that's what we did we went to that you know now now obviously you need to acclimate and change and start working on different blocks of training i I understand that as a person who's loves to train but then um then the other uh, oh the o-line now you may remember this over a year ago i told you guys after season one under billy napier that our that our um stats with ar were padded because he was a mobile qb so um you know as far as the o-line stats sure and then but then, you know, um, everyone gave shit. Like, like we, we still had a decent O-line year one, and then year two comes, and we have a shit O-line, and everyone's ragging on sale. And um, I was listening to your uh, show with Stephen Harrison uh, today and, um, and Solderquist from the other day, and, we, and you were, like, starting to go, hey, you know what? Maybe we're giving this dude shit unfairly because look what he had to work with, right? So um you know what man i've been saying that but the the o line is also about you know solidarity unit a, a unit working in unity together you know what i mean as one and um look all the guys he did have from mullen they all left the most yeah. experienced ones all left That's so there was there, there was yeah. from year one yeah there's we went to the nfl and two to three more dipped Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. There was, there's no carryover in experience. So we're starting from scratch again, also starting from scratch for the quarterback and missing depth on the, on the defense and on, on the offensive line. I mean, really, what were we supposed to look like? And, and to think that honestly, we could have won a few games last year for uh, rightfully so probably should have won. So how the fuck is it that Miami's better than us? They play nobody all year long with a marginally better w- a win loss record. That's what I was telling Chi Town. I was like, I, they, that game, it doesn't threaten me at all because because of they're going to give it like, their they best. Looked, they, they've looked. If we're looking at record wise production, kind of just blunders on the football field, and then again the, the data sheet, it's similar. But you played in a mm-hmm. shit schedule. Yeah, and you, and played a lot of like freshmen. Shit. <clears throat> yep, played. A, they 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 have some a few more highly touted recruits in the trenches, but those dudes are young too. They're, it's not like they're vets. For so sure. I just don't I don't get off where they're better. I don't, I think we're missing a little bit of tight end talent. Um, I think that I don't know, linebacker that room with Bordenham, Hans, uh, uh, Hayden Hansen, and then Zipper. He's coming back for his like seventh year. I feel like. And You've got moved. one true blocker though, one, and it's Hanson. And if he gets hurt, I think Gavin you don't, Hill. You don't, I think and, but Gavin Hill moved from from edge to from D line to tight end. So he did. Will will he be able to do the job efficiently? I mean, like you know what I mean. As I was watching I clip, uh, with Callaway. He was. They were actually working on blocking. So they're working on that. Yeah, I don't I don't get on Twitter a whole bunch, so I I miss all the Twitter stuff and it does bother me, but Twitter's so convoluted. There's so much on there, so I don't really get to watch all of it, man. You get this your, your camera always makes out, my yeah. eye look really low, like I'm fucking chink eyed or something. It makes me look like I've had a stroke. I don't know why. Um yeah, man, you know, I don't know. Like there's just been a lot of nonsense. I'm I'm market right now. We're winning eight games this year. 
at least are back. I'm serious. And, and I and I, I there there's potential for more. Okay. Y- yes, it could go south, and we could just win five or six again, and it could be an ugly five, or it could be a really respectable six wins. But I honestly. I hate to be one of those fans because I've always tried to be patient. And these people who are kind of like, oh, we deserve better than that. And, you know, this bold fans. But you know what, man? I am tired of hearing all this, like, uh, you know, kind of setting our bar low bullshit. I'm tired of it. This has got to be an eight. It, it, and I say got to be. It really doesn't truly have to be, but it needs to be. This look, needs to be an eight win season. It's got to be competitive. We've got to look. I mean, mm-hmm. look, you know, the, the Arkansas loss was unacceptable. Mizzou yep. fourth and seventeen would have been a massive win, and I'm going to put that in unacceptable because of the way we lost, and then uh, what was the other close game we lost? There's one more. One more, one more again. The FSU was close. Yeah, FSU two years was, in a row. Yeah, I feel like we. I mean, that one's a little bit different situation with Max Brown. That one I'm not going to really say, like you know toss up to. It was just you know. Yeah, well, I mean, they just the with a few things didn't go our way, you know what I mean? We yeah. always get dirty calls in that game. It goes both ways. We get some our way, we get they get some their way, but at the end of the day, um a coin toss really kind of wins that game. You know what I mean? I wish we so, could just played the way we played uh versus Tennessee. That game was incredible. Stock top to bottom, impeccable. I mean, the Utah well, game, the Utah game was a winnable game. Uh, I don't feel like they yes, beat us. Yes, out of that it, you, it wasn't We close. were just completely a mess. Yeah. So. In Tennessee, I, I, the, the thing was, is the Tennessee game, everyone was so hyped. It was like, our defense, our defense. And I saw right through it because I'm going to tell you right now, if that game wasn't played at home, we didn't win. No, yeah, that was that was all off of adrenaline. I was there. And the second yep. half, we we played kind of just, we survived. We didn't play. We didn't. We didn't dominate. We survived. Napier took half. credit for that. He drew, he said he drew back and got conservative, and I think that's what he likes to do. I think he I think he likes to go ahead and like just kind of um drag you out into deep water and suffocate you. You know yeah, what I mean? I think that I think that's his. That that's just what he likes to do. He likes to try and get up on the score and then fun, suffocate yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to I don't like it. that, dude. Because when we played um, when we played that first year of Utah, I'm pretty sure I lost a few years of my life. Oh my god! What a game. I do that moment drove was me one over of the edge. Electric. That was that stream. I'm blitzed, bro. Like that was, <laughs> it was I was still new to this <laughs> that thing. Game man. That game pushed was, me. That was that was a good Yeah, time. man. I know. You it was it was easy to get on here and chat now, man. And look, off season you got hundred and fifty people in here right now. Shit, come come uh come talk and see or um uh, past talking season into the football season. There's gonna be five hundred people in here after the games. Oh, dude, those, and those good for you, man. Good for you guys. I mean, you putting out content every day. That's got to take a lot of your time, man. You're being a, a husband and a father now because trust me, man, I got twins and I got this <laughs> asshole right here. <laughs> Shit. That's so nice. I love it. Oh, dude. He, yeah, he's a he's a big smush face. Check him out. His, do you like wrestling at all? I'm a familiar with he's that. A, well, I named him after the '90s, uh, '80s, '90s uh, wrestler uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Okay, I just finished watching the Iron Claw, so I actually want to watch that. I haven't got to watch it yet. Brutal. I'm not a, like a wrestling fanatic. I just liked it when I was a kid. That's all. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Brutal, brutal movie. So, so um, who do you, who do you think we lose the uh, for the 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 portal window? Yeah, I was wondering about that, man. I haven't really heard any noise, and may if we I do, I don't think we lose. But maybe I'm worried about the linebacker room, man. Really? Not anyone, not necessarily anyone leaving. I'm uh, worried about the linebacker room from a depth standpoint. Sure, sure. I, yeah, that, look, I think no that one's the, talking I, well, I think about the quantities it. there. The qualities is is us, which I guess will still impact the the depth because if it does, if, if I mean, you have ten guys, if they all if they're not, you know, doing a good job. Then, it means that it's not really depth. It's just you, well, you got Pup. He's 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 all that, but he's still a little inexperienced. You've got Miles Graham, who's gonna be great, but inexperienced. You've got Charles, probably gonna be phenomenal again, inexperienced. You've got Manor, um, uh, Manny Nunnery, which I mean, I guess you could say. R.J. Moten moved into yeah. the linebacker, which I think is going to be a bigger play. They wanted Kamari Wilson to move from safety because of his size. Again, I think that adds a special flavor that we didn't have last year. Uh, somebody who's mm-hmm. able to play coverage, play that weak side linebacker, he's not going to be like, I don't think a big hit, but 
No, they want him for speed to drop back into coverage for sure, about, which is a good play, thing. He works. The play we had, we lost to Mizzou with that fourth and 17 with Scooby was just in fucking no man's land. Mm -hmm. RJ Moat would have been spot on for that play. Like he would have he right. would have been in his natural right. habitat for that particular moment. And I think that's yeah. where he'll actually thrive because that's he's already been doing that. He just he lacks the speed and the size of I think. Yeah, you um, we got Wingo, and you know that's another thing. I'm, I, I'm gonna come to Wingo. Wingo's defense. A lot of people shit on Wingo. It's like, oh, you know, he's a solid, he's solid guy. Wingo was a hell of a talent. The dude's body just won't hold up, and yeah. you know, people are forgetting he was a highly coveted uh, recruit, man. And yeah. he's 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 a he's a, a grown ass man playing amongst children. And, or, or, to be honest with you, he's just uh, his body just won't hold up. I can relate to that myself. So hopefully, hopefully he can have a, I mean, everyone's pick, I mean, they picked him to have a breakout year and so did, uh, uh, Austin Barber when we had him on. So we had big rod coming on next Friday. So I'm going to, I would like to see that one. Um, you out of all the portal guys we had come in, uh, like I said, I was listening to the video, uh, today with, with, with Steven Harrison, Soderquist and, uh, you were the first person I've heard mention out of all the recruits come in. The one that I'm excited to hear about because, um, well, for instance, Justice Boone is number one, right, on the jerseys, and I'd been I'd been itching to hear his name for a little bit, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, under uh, this regime, he's been noted noticed, and the one that I I'm currently looking forward to to see how he turns out is gonna be Gums, George yeah, Gums, George Gums, yeah, yeah, that dude's a dude's a unit, bro. Peace, bro, he dude's a unit. Um, you know who else I want to hear about too, though. I want to hear um, about um, – this one's going to catch people a little weird, uh, but I actually want to hear about the the quarterback transfer, Clay Millen. Because, listen, man, there's there's a chance that guy, if, if Mertz is hurt, you might need somebody with more experience. Yeah, just to kind of come in and keep – you know, be the bad Alex Smith type keep, of – Keep the flow. And yeah, I'm yeah, curious yeah. to how he wasn't even that bad when he played. So I'm really just curious to see Where how he, he looks at? in practice. Was it Colorado State? Colorado, yeah. He played. Um, Colorado yeah, he State. played. A, Not yeah, Colorado, Colorado right? State. He had a good. Yeah. He had a pretty good season, and then he got hurt, and then uh, I guess effectively kind of you say lost his starting job because of being hurt. But I mean, he didn't look bad, you know. Yeah, and we haven't heard certainly Maybe just a backup. But I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah, I can probably have Zach on if I remember I'll talk to him about it because obviously DJ Lagway is such a shining star. He overshadows a lot of that. Yeah, there was one other person I wanted to 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 look into too, and I can't remember who the hell it was now, but he was somebody like Clay Millen that's kind of like you know fell through the fell through the cracks. But uh, you know, I, I'm I'm always looking for the underdogs, man. Um, K, we y'all were just talking about K Jack, man. I've been on that dude's case for a couple years. Um, you, you ready? The one I called for forever from the moment he walked on the campus, I heard about him when VG three and then we're talking about how, uh, they used to call him the, the Trask force. Did you ever hear that? No. Who's it? They used, they used to call Ch Kyle Trask, the Trask force. Like, uh, like task force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because they said the kid could spin the rock. And he was dropping dimes in practice back when uh, Hargraves and them were on the team. Yeah, yeah. And so I was interested in that because I lived in Gainesville then, and you know, then I moved up here. But um, but Kyle Trask, I I knew the kid could play well, and I kept saying, and everyone wanted Felipe Franks to start, man. And I had my eye on him. The kid obviously was a a diamond just waiting to be uncovered, man. No, and so and he was so. I've always got my eyes on those guys, man. But I, I'm calling it, bro. Eight games this year. I love it. I don't hate it. I think it's there. I'm I'm big on it. I, um, it's not unreasonable, man. I'm so no. sick of the talking bullshit, dude. A lot of these teams we're going to play aren't going to be as good as they think they are. And there's going to be a few of them we need to stop sleeping on, like UCF. If you think that we're, UCF isn't going to give us a handful of trouble, you're crazy. They're going to come play. They're going to give us their best. FSU is going to give us their best. And so is uh, Miami. It's going to be a hell of a fight yeah, against boy. Miami. I, I think I think Miami might legitimately be a, like a double overtime game. I, I I don't think it should be, but it could be. And I think look, the UCF game. The biggest thing is is that we've got a lot of these big games at home, and 
Thankfully, they're early, right? That Utah game, I think, kind of put things off on a blender, having to travel across the country. Game one at home is going to be huge, but it's not far from Miami even. I don't feel like it's going to be a true road game in the sense of, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, obviously playing this. They should tough. still be fairly outnumbered at, at home. Yo, yeah. hey, I'll, I'll, okay, I mean, well, this one. I'm gonna say this before because I know I know I gotta get going. Let you let it, somebody else get in here. I've given this Miami game in this scenario a lot of thought, and I'm sure you've seen all the talking heads on TV saying it's big for both of them. Um, Cristobal and Napier they're in a similar situation. And imagine if you lose that game, the pressure that mounts on you the rest of the year. You know you're gonna probably be the one who sinks. And this is how I look at it: if one team wins handedly and the other one loses then i say that statement holds true it will be a defeat and could possibly unless somehow it's the catalyst to turn it on the the motor yeah turn the gas on right otherwise the season comes apart but i do think that if it turns into a slugfest in a war and goes into like double overtime which i'm predicting it won't carry um, as much of a sting for both it's teams. not going to care. It, yeah, as long as it's I not think, an ugly, sloppy game. I think Miami has a little bit of leeway given the fact that it is on the road. Well, you remember when we played them in 19, they were terrible. But if even though that game was exciting, it was an ugly game on both parts. It, yeah, was, it was really – It was atrocious. Yeah. Yeah, it, it looked like we were unprepared like this damn Utah game that we just played last year. Yeah, and so we can't have that again I, either. Billy's got to have his shit. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. If we come in unprepared, we're 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 giving them a uh we're we're giving them a little bit of a a thumbs up, you know, to come in and win the game. We don't need to do that. Certainly, don't need to do them any favors. So you want a spring game? I'm not, man. I'm nine. I'm literally 900 miles away. I Excuses. live up here where that bridge collapsed. Oh shit! Okay, pretty far. I drive over that bridge weekly. Wow, that's how you get to my job. Yep, I nice. drive. It's at that 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 um, I would say I could have been on that bridge, but I usually drive over it in the daytime. But it's um, my job is in a town called Glen Burnie, which is the outer banks of a uh, out outskirts uh, industrial area of Baltimore, and um, and I haul fuel for a living, and uh, that's down there around all the ports where some of the terminals are. But I actually don't go down there as much. I actually go up to Delaware and pull and work remotely out of Delaware. I live directly in between the two, like 50 miles to the port that way, 50 miles to the port the other way. Um, so it, it's really nothing for me to go over that bridge. In fact, my company paid me $7 every time I drive over it. <laughs> so <laughs> That's crazy. It, yeah, we, we we don't get paid by the hour. It, we're on con, we're union workers or paid contracts. So, okay. um, but yeah, you know, it's really sad that it went down. I see a lot of people on the internet, and I know this is a little off topic, but I see a lot of people on the internet doing the the conspiracy theory for um, you know, sabotage. And I, to be honest with you, I just want to, if for anyone that's listening, um, yes, I guess that's always a possibility. I wouldn't completely rule it out, but the reality of it is, this whole thing is. Re- really truly just an accident man the community up here is really really distraught about it man seriously yeah, it was it's it really was wild, sad man. it's just dude, nowadays everything is a conspiracy but uh man thankfully you weren't on that bridge man and i appreciate you calling in as always big guy good seeing you man yeah man you guys have a great night man looking forward Thanks to the rest well. of the show man go get it all right. go get it. <clears throat> all right boys and girls great little show there i'm gonna wrap it up um good stuff great conversations love getting everybody's thoughts and opinions about it love kind of where you know everyone's heads at in regards to the team. And I'll try to do more of these throughout the this this offseason. I know guys, you guys enjoy it, and we'll get kind of get it back in a little bit of a routine. But again, next Friday, looks like uh, we're going to have Big Rod on 7.30. So you guys don't want to miss that. Put it on your calendars. Uh, sit back and relax. And uh, you guys be good, though. I love you. Good seeing you, as always. Have a good night. Prayers for our boy Linky. And uh, peace and love, baby.